Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and if you're new, welcome to Expand Love Show. We have an amazing guest today, Boris, who is a raw vegan and he's living in a community in Ecuador called Fruit Haven. I am so excited to have him here. So I watched the video from Fruit Haven and once I watched it, I was like, this is my dream. This is what I want to create, a community of raw vegans living on a permaculture farm where fruit trees are growing. And then when Boris followed me on Instagram, I was like, like this is just like divine timing. So I'm very, very happy to have Boris here. Welcome to the show. Boris, could you Hello. just introduce yeah, yourself? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm Boris. Uh, I have a fun history of uh, like three countries well now I guess I'm in the fourth country but I've traveled around probably about 20 or so countries and so yeah I'm, uh, here in Ecuador now and kind of making this uh, my home and uh, kind of stop traveling just in this area I travel around sometimes but um, yeah so we're in this uh, fruit haven community growing fruit trees planting fruit trees making like permaculture and and uh, yeah. mostly raw vegan, but uh, sometimes, yeah, people are also transitioning or maybe just experimenting with the uh, vegan, cooked vegan diets that are like whole plant based, following like Arnold Eretz and other advices. And yeah. Wow. Wow. And uh, are non raw vegans allowed to visit, or is it uh, only vegan people who can visit in the community? Um, we we have like an application process and we will consider based on what uh what people like motivations are if they're transitioning if they want to experiment like we, we might uh allow visitors and then of course if people have private land so we have group land buys and um we can't really control what people do there i mean we can suggest things and we, we try our best and that's why we also have it as a group owned land so we don't just allow anybody to buy the land we review it together and make a decision um so we're kind of a bit more strict we try to yeah because this is a very unique project that there's not many places otherwise it just becomes another village which is kind of okay but i think it's something unique that i want to i want to try to preserve but um yeah. yeah it's hard to say like how many people are fully raw all the time i think primarily like most of the time maybe you know there are people are gonna be eating primarily raw so we're we're just starting like i think this project is started like six years ago or so six or seven so seven i think for the other community about seven yeah. years ago yeah wow. and uh Beautiful. and then they made a spin off on this one amazing amazing and what about you how long have you been raw vegan uh, actually similar time but i didn't know about this place about six years so 2016 when i first uh, started this journey i discovered like my brother told me about um i think he told me first like dr moore's and uh, that I started following some people on on YouTube. He's uh, pointed to some like uh, Ted Carr. Maybe heard of him? Yeah. And yeah. Um, it was the other. Yeah. There's like uh, Sweet Natural Living. These guys from Norway, and he met yeah. them by chance in Thailand while he was traveling. Wow. And so he he saw these connections. And so, but he still was kind of questioning, like, is this the right thing? You know, like a lot of people are not sure because there's so many advice that are conflicting and like sometimes you see people that are uh not so healthy telling you one thing so it's like are you gonna qualify that or, or the opposite like healthy people saying something that sounds weird too so so yeah anyway so i thought it made sense to me it was like okay that's fruit it's natural it's raw that's how we're meant to live and in our physiology and all these things. So I was like, yeah, that's perfect. But I took it slow, it's like transitioning some months was like just uh, increasing the amounts of fruits I eat and then decreasing like any other things and including yeah, like vegetables. And yeah, I was uh, always drawn to sweet, sweet food in general, like cakes and 
and candies and stuff and that's like most fruit is really sweet and that's like perfect the uh, yeah fruit is what we're trying to eat um when we want sweet things and it's not actually harmful like i used to eat candy and have like all these cavities and well really what i wanted is sweet fruit and and my mom had fruit but i just remember they weren't very ripe and sweet and like then i started learning like how to find the root right fruits and how to ripen it and and then i started eventually going closer to the the source and just like okay well i gotta go where it grows you know so i started when uh to a farm and i picked cherries like i work there as a cherry picker organic farm because i i decided like there's no point for me to be around the chemicals that's just not good anyway so um yeah so after yeah. that I, i was attracted to go to like festival the raw vegans uh, i went to like a fruit um, festival in canada and then yeah. after that yeah i think that's when i i found fruit haven i just searched like yeah. raw vegan communities and there was a bunch of different ones and uh found fruit haven in um 2018 the end of the year so it was about almost yeah like three more three years ago more than yeah. three years now i guess yeah wow and uh, like how was it did you like quickly turn into a raw vegan and, or was it like a time period that you took for transitioning did you have cravings yeah. did you face the detox how was the journey definitely yeah definitely had cravings um on and off and then yeah it was a, I, um yeah i think for the first like four months it was a little bit I was going easy on it and I remember in the first year that I had moments where I was just like well I was I wanted to be raw vegan in India but then I wanted to try a little bit of the food it was like really nice so so I just would have like a veggie samosa or something I don't know whatever once in a while but after that um I had kind of more detoxing going on that I was kind of I wasn't sure what it is it was something from travel it could have been an insect or some but like the doctors just couldn't i tried like antibiotics things that just didn't work and um so i decided to just do this fast and i did juicing and i saw your video about enemas and i agree definitely it was like it was a special fast called master fast system which includes yeah. uh like grape juice and lemon juice enemas dry fasting between so there's no water being drunk at all just like strict schedule of juice fast and then there's herbs and also psyllium husk so it helps moving the the plaque mucoid plaque out of the intestines and after yeah. i did this for about 30 days it healed this for about two weeks i think the first two weeks it was like kind of detox effects were going on and then after that i just continued because i wanted to keep keep going and see how i can do it and then after that it was just like uh before and after it was kind of like that's it i have no more cravings like just fruits and as once in a while i might have like a whole plant cooked vegan type of thing but very rarely and very simple like i like it just pure like if it's a plantain and then it's got to be boiled if it's basically boiled or steamed that's like the only thing maybe cooked over a fire if it's a very like once in a lifetime or once in a year maybe i don't know <laughs> yeah, yeah. not often wow. anyway wow wow and uh so this you would say that a pr- how long was this grape uh lemon and enema thing that you were doing was it for um i did it for 30 yeah about a month and uh it included dry fasting like schedule so it was um 12 hours a day which is pretty easy because including sleep like yeah. people are dry fasting so just add additional uh, like four hours or whatever and then once yeah. a week was a 24 hour which i usually would do about 36 so just like fast overnight until the next day hours yeah and then uh what's the other yeah then once at the end was like three days but i think i did about 70 hours or so so just under 72 hours and uh That's once in a I while thought. i would do yeah dry fasting and sometimes wow. i will continue doing like uh once a year maybe after that i did maybe some days of this fast of a couple days like maybe i'll just have some juice dry yeah. fast and especially powerful on the full moon time we just yes. passed the full moon so that was yeah. nice nice strong <laughs> yeah. one exactly it was a strong one yeah 
Mm -hmm. They're very beautiful in there. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Amazing. So uh, when you did this juice fast and after that, you said that your detox like reduced a lot and your cravings also uh, reduced exactly, quite, yes. quite a bit. And so if, yeah. if my audience, they want to check out this uh, kind of, uh, you know, fasting, where can they find it? Uh, yeah, you can go. I think the website is like masterfastsystem.com or Google it or whatever. Check it out. And they have like a group on Facebook. Yeah. So you can join it and see and the yeah. guy that created it. He's a, a little bit strict and he kind of because he has to repeat the same stuff like people ask all over the same question so it's just yeah. like read read everything thoroughly before and i think now to like get more access he, he might have restricted to like see the actual protocol so yeah, yeah i could like explain it to somebody but i don't know if, if uh, yeah, yeah maybe okay. they can send me a private message or something <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. I'll definitely link your channel and Instagram as well so that everyone can reach you out. And if you have any other, you know, website that you want me to link in, I would definitely uh, be very, very happy to connect you to people. Um, sweet. So, uh, and how, how have you been feeling? Of course, if you look radiant and uh, your energy is also really amazing. So I don't have to nice. say that you've been feeling amazing on the raw vegan diet. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been uh, good. But, yeah. So how, how are your days like in the community? What what are you guys doing? And, you know, I'm sure people would love to know about how is it to live in a raw vegan community? Uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty fun. Like mostly it depends uh, on the time of year and what people are up to and which community too, because we have like a bunch of different communities spread out. So here at Fruit Haven, we have uh, a, right now we have three community areas, but mainly two of them are more active because yeah, mainly because we have internet and power so it's like one area is close by it doesn't have the power so people just sometimes they might stay there and then they'll come over here fruit haven one so we have like a house with the kitchen and some rooms people stay in and some other yeah cabins and well one cabin again but anyway yeah, so people are hanging out and usually maybe getting some food, preparing some food that's like raw, some evening they might be cooking. Uh, some, yeah, people have their projects and a lot of the landowners are here. And uh, we also have a lot of local workers. So yeah, unfortunately we can't force them to be, you know, raw vegan or anything, or even vegan for that fa yeah. matter. Yeah. We can try, yeah. but we, like sometimes people make them food like and teach them about yeah. that. And, and actually some of them are interested, yeah um yeah. because they're kind of uh you know in this rural area they don't really get a lot of non-vegan food anyway it's like naturally just plants because that's what grows around most common food is like uh rice and um i don't know uh, beans and like yucca and plantain things like that just like starches that like, are yeah. easy to grow <laughs> yeah 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 completely the same situation over here as well like the community like the villagers around here are very curious and they're willing to learn they're learning from our culture with us also but um like they're not like the idea of veganism is like too far ahead right now which is okay well like, and I, that's I, actually interesting because india is like what 70 percent vegetarian, vegetarian or something so it's like it's just changing. just that little bit it's hard to <laughs> drop <laughs> yeah the dairy or whatever they eat yeah, I mean, correct. But it's changing so much. I think more and more people are also, especially in the cities, becoming non-vegetarian. And uh, here in the village, they don't eat so much meat, but once in a week, twice in a week, they, they eat it. And I think to go to their family, like uh, there are adults coming and working here and to go to the family and tell them, tell their family, you know, that I'm going to be a raw vegan because there are some people living here that, or I'm going to be a vegan, I want to leave, you know, meat or dairy products. It's, I think, very difficult for them. It's a big, uh, you know, leap. But on, also, I think it's different uh, when there's a big community uh, living and then, like, for, like, it's my personal property over here. So we have a community, but the community is decentralized. It's spread over the hills as well as, like, other parts of India. 
and people are doing their own projects and you know they come together uh, for example i have lots of support here in polony hills because of the community people and then we come we do retreats together and then we meet up we're there for each other like we're in close proximity but everyone is there doing their own project so uh, you know i think it's a different impact that people have when um, you know there's a community and it's more stronger because they see so many people coming together from you know different parts of the world and doing something and also i think your project is like so much on a bigger scale um, uh, than what i'm doing right now since like it's just uh, a personal thing that that's happening so well, yeah go ahead i'd love to listen to you okay. <laughs> like, interesting so you to, have yeah. it spread out as well in in various communities and people are checking like are they working together sometimes and helping each other yeah so basically we are one community and we call gaia expanding consciousness not everyone is a uh, uh, vegan or uh, even raw vegan uh, so what happened but but people are like really curious and they're trying and you know how the transition phase can be so long because it's like mm. deep addiction that you're dealing with so most of the people are vegan and lots of people are raw vegan and um and then we have like multiple properties uh in so for example in palani hills there are multiple properties that we have and there are different kinds of properties so we have resorts we have um you know just like more off the grid places like my own and then we have like uh, some places in the town as well so the whole idea is uh, basically expanding consciousness through getting people connected who want to add value to the world and then you know food becomes a part of it because of course you know when you are upgrading yourself you have to upgrade your food also so um, that's how we like you know so what uh, what it gives us is like a lot of community support because if i'm here i can't it's very difficult if i'm just on my own if i have a community people come in if there is a need and then we do like retreats together we we have music festivals together we also just come and meet each other and you know there is this like i think the mo- ma- major basis of the community is true love we are like really deeply bonded in love like unconditional love at least the core members and then you know it spreads out to like you know more fringes where we have people all over the world so even in europe and you know other parts of the world america everywhere we have people and then if i have to go and then i can just like live with them if they come here they can live with us so we oh, yeah, this awesome. is the system yeah that we are following and then i do have a vision you know i want to put it out here that you know eventually probably like you know in ecuador you guys are there and then i we can develop more bigger permaculture spaces and like people who want to be raw vegan or are on the journey or are raw vegans and then we it's like uh, ecuador is connected with india you know that's the vision that i yeah, truly have yeah. uh, for definitely future. need to make a network of like vegan yeah. raw vegan communities i think there's Follow like more, yeah. some websites we're on they're called ecovillages.org and then ic which is intentionalcommunity.org something like that and sometimes people find us through that so wow. check those out if you're not listed on there yeah those are cool I, uh, yeah. i'll send you the links yeah yeah amazing <laughs> yeah that that's so amazing so uh, i was there never... communities yeah intentional oh, sorry yeah go ahead no no yeah. uh yeah we have to come together i think that's the that's the future that how i see it you know it's uh yeah that that's how i see it that you know all these places will come together and then it's new new earth in a very different yeah. way so uh, uh, yeah it's amazing to walk with the land and to connect with nature to really do permaculture it just really came on my way uh, i was um, never like looking out for it and yeah it, it's i think it's the most beautiful thing one one person can do you know nurture mother earth so, so when did you start with that land that you bought when did you buy it the land the land i bought it uh, one year ago yeah oh okay uh, recent was, nice yes yes i was living in the in the community so before we even now we have like spots where people live together so i was living with them and then i uh, we were doing permaculture on that land and then i had a desire to have my own land and uh, you know bring certain things because it was not raw vegan at all I- initially and now the raw veganism part is growing so much in the community uh, uh, and my partner he's also uh, you know living here he's also a farmer and then he's uh, helping with the farming 
not helping actually he is doing okay. the main job i am learning yeah. <laughs> from him so and even raw veganism is something that came through him only in my life and um yeah and then it's like just transferring to uh, other people in the community because they see the energy they see the you know vibrance and then everyone is looking to find health solutions um and and i think that is one of the thing that attracts them as well so now we have lots of people who have done juice fast and who have been raw for long periods of time they kind of like you know go down a little bit here and there but i completely understand i for me also it took like um i went uh, raw uh, with a juice fast and then i was raw for a few months and then i introduced cooked food in between and now i'm like you know um it's been 2 years that i'm on this journey and like 8 months no salt uh, mostly fruits so uh, mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> now with some enemas so that will that will take you to the next level <laughs> uh, come again oh with the enemas now it will take you to the next yeah. level certainly certainly so i, I see yeah, that I'm sometimes people are doing of, juicing yeah. sometimes people do the juicing and then they don't do that they omit the enemas whether they know about it or not sometimes they're just like apprehensive it's like oh i don't know you know whatever and then uh sometimes they have issues yeah they'll after the fast they suddenly be eating like uh, yeah junk whatever maybe vegan sometimes even not vegan and like it's it's really strange that like they try to clean out their body and then do kind of harm like afterwards yeah. because it's like you cleaned your vessel and then suddenly putting you know all kinds of junk in there that's like what's the point of doing the cleaning then <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yes but i also think it's like such a deep concept and deep idea that is so far off from the world that people take a lot of time to grasp it and to you know really bring it into their life it's a big journey of learning some people are really lucky and then they get it like in first go but even for me i was like really doubtful in the beginning that okay like when, whenever the detox happens am i doing the right thing you know mm, yeah <laughs> so, yeah so, and as you go on the journey and as you experience that life force then you're more confident and then you're like okay yeah i know this is the path i'm certain because the experience comes in and i also know that it's like it, it, when your vessel is clean and then you're putting in junk it kind of harms you even more so yeah it's a mm-hmm. uh, yeah it's i think everyone's journey is so different and it's like so many you know mental patterns that we have to let go of uh, while we are on the journey as well so yeah yeah exactly i, I, I found it uh, very emotional like if most people you might talk to that ever do fasting they'll notice it's like the emotions are coming up that's that's what we what it is like eating is emotional and then fasting is like those emotions are coming out and often yeah, yeah people mix emotional eating that's even worse probably but <laughs> Yeah 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 it's like the emotions are i feel stored in that old matter that is there in our body mm. and then and we yeah. do the fast as we change our food all of it is coming out and we're also releasing it so much when exactly, we are exactly yeah um, releasing it the mucoid plaque and and uh that kind of stuff yeah. comes out and it it can have yeah some people don't even believe in that but yeah i think it can happen with other types of fast for me it's been this master fast which is good like i'm not trying to advertise it or anything but yeah it's it's just useful in my experience but other than that yeah. come visit fruit haven and <laughs> yeah and of course of course so are you guys doing uh, fast for people over there are you organizing retreats yeah. as well wow uh, it's help. not fully fully like right now we have it more independently so there's one private lot that's doing it so it's maria's lot she's uh she's got a lot of the you could see actually the link she made her page and then we linked it on our page and uh she made a colonic system which is basically uh like a bigger version of an enema and goes like more water deeper and cleans out you know better and she has also a couple options for retreat type of things where people can stay at her place for some days and do like uh the colonic treatments and ju- juices and stuff and whatever or do like a more raw gourmet she's also a really good chef she does like pizzas and burgers and like she can teach she's done lots of videos and like really awesome potlucks like we always love eating her food it's like clean 
like creating like junk food mimicking it <laughs> yeah. with like amazing yeah. tastes and like uh and yeah. it's all healthy like you could I usually for me it's a little bit heavy sometimes but doing it yeah. once in a while it's not that much like maybe I'll do it on Christmas or whatever you know it's not a big deal yeah yeah sure and then I'll detox after <laughs> <laughs> I know Reducing yeah. thing for like a week after that <laughs> wow no, no. yeah <laughs> no, no, I'm probably doing usually maybe like just fruits, like I'll stick to maybe like, I don't even like too many salads. I eat like whole fruits. Sometimes I do what one person said, like a deconstructed salad where I'll take like a bite of a cucumber, a bite of a tomato, like, you know, just like <laughs> portable yeah. salad. Like just, I like to forage just going and like eating the greens. We have different greens. I don't know if you, you probably can grow it in your climate too. It's called katuk. Is like uh, a really okay. nutty tasting leaf. I don't know if you can find some nurseries near you or something or like find a way yeah. to connect with yeah. other tropical fruit growers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've been bringing seeds from all over the world and trying to grow different mm. kinds of, you know, plants over here. We have over 300 varieties of plants that we are growing oh, nice. already in last one year. Yes. Uh, but yeah, tell me about like how, how is it that so there... Of course, there are, um, okay, so I want to understand the process of like growing fruits. And really, man, you're like really blessed that you have organic fruits around you. We're still, you know, in the process of uh, being able to get organic produce. Uh, the, the situation in India is completely different. So, but then if someone buys the land, so for, for example, for me, it's going to be a long process of being able to grow fruit trees so are you guys getting uh, like you know big trees and planting them how is the whole process of mm -hmm. you know setting up the community or their community spaces and then people can just buy and come and buy in a permaculture forest you know yeah exactly out? it's been growing like in the beginning we just bought well i guess it was before me even they just bought land but actually i also helped buying land uh once i came that was about three years ago so about six years ago they just bought some land uh initially and then the next year more but yeah this most of the land was just um like either just forested like secondary forest or like a kind of pasture grass or like near the house there's like a bunch of fruit trees things like that but like an old house that's probably like 60 years old where i'm in now it's a fruit haven one uh, of course, yeah. we renovated it, painted all kinds yeah. of stuff, um, changed some stuff about it. But yeah, so uh, for after these past couple of years now that I've been here, it's been developing like the lot owners are sending money or coming and also developing themselves. But usually they'll send money for workers and we'll hire them and like uh, explain some of the people actually hire their own workers but it's more often because they're they, it's kind of specialized skill to know like how to speak spanish and and how to grow stuff so usually they'll tell us what they want done and then we manage it like the founder peter and some other guys that are helping now that came uh we have like a workshop manager so we basically have like a little storage kind of like a hardware store here so we have some stuff here we bring it from the nearby cities and then um, for building stuff and then uh, for a nursery, there's a couple nurseries in the area, but they don't have like really awesome, uh, like tropical, like uh, exotic things that are not really from this area. For example, uh, jackfruit, durian, things like that. So they'll have like citrus trees. We can buy uh, soursop, which is common in this area. So we can get those kinds of things and then the rest of them we have our own nursery so after some years like researching and learning how to plant stuff like it really is important yeah, to have the trees a little bit so like sometimes you can stick a, a seed in the ground and get lucky or just even throw it and yeah you get lucky like i had some cucumbers that came out of my compost which is like my own humanure compost like i just uh had like probably over 10 cucumbers and i didn't even put any effort into it so that was fun but uh, if you don't get lucky then you have to actually plant the tree and usually you want it to be a, a fairly decent size like if it's too small the leaves can get eaten by some you know some animal insect or whatever stumped stumped by something by accident or whatever right so there's so many things that can happen the sun can just 
heated up in like sunburn or or maybe not enough sun which is another reason that trees don't grow so like if there's a forest all around it so it's like a really delicate balance of like getting the right amount of sun and rain and everything and like this area is really good for that so the temperature is between a narrow range it's uh, never too hot or cold and it doesn't um, go too long without rain here so usually every day or two there'll be some rain we have some dry spells of like a week or two so that's important if you have small trees or even seeds but uh, that's why a nursery is good so if you have a bigger tree it's less likely to dry out and so you want to continuously put a lot of mulch so watch some videos about mulching i would say that's one of the most important things it's you keep a heavy layer of mulch which is like a lot of organic matter around the fruit tree and that way you just uh, keep like the moisture even if it doesn't rain it gives it like organic matter to break down so fungus bacteria they'll be working on breaking it down into its like components like the nitrogen and the phosphorus and all the good stuff that your fruit trees need in order to grow and then eventually after a couple of years depending on what kind of plant you have you'll probably get some fruits out of it and then after i don't know hopefully like 10 years if it's healthy you're gonna have like a lot of fruits and probably won't even need to worry too much about uh maintaining it like maybe you want to prune it in a certain shape over the years so it's not like overgrowing and certainly you want to do plant spacing so you don't put anything like right next to your house or path or something that's like another important fruit tree so you want to learn about like how big is a tree going to be in like 10 years or whatever like if it's a giant tree then you need like at least 10 12 meters away from whatever the next thing awesome yeah i got it so are you guys self-sustainable with the fruits and the food or are you buying also right now yeah we buy unfortunately no we're not fully self-sustainable but uh every year or so we're reminded about like well we should probably plant more stuff like when a couple of years ago i guess yeah before covid there was like some kind of protests in ecuador and there are some issues with um transport like they blocked some roads and protests and stuff so we're like okay we probably should plant more food because we actually we can have like some food not for like 10 people which we had about i don't remember maybe more than 10 people at that time they were visiting like often we have volunteers and guests and whatever different kinds of people here owners um so okay we planted some more stuff then kind of forgot about it as things went normal then the next year this covid thing started and it was like okay again they blocked roads and did all kinds of weird stuff that kind of we're like okay good now we have more but we still have to plant more so we started planting more but uh now we're comfortable again because there's like shops near us and all kinds of food deliveries but i think uh in terms of like certain foods we're we're pretty abundant like we can probably have more bananas than most of us can eat like i kind of stopped eating them well i eat like maybe one uh, in every couple days at this point even though we have like good varieties much tastier than the most common cabin dish and whatever but uh if i'm like out of food that's probably what i eat i eat like banana but other than that like we have lots of greens we can probably have pretty good abundance of this katuk because i liked it so much i started planting more of it and it grows easily and quickly but other things like vegetables they take much more care and maintenance and like you have to keep replanting them so i like more perennials like trees that continuously produce but some of them are seasonal so right now it's a huge abundance we have march uh is the local fruits um so we have like i don't know five different kinds of fruits and yeah that are all local but other than march and then maybe april but then there's like some other fruit so we really need to figure out like okay what can we plan the will fruit in a different time of year and so we're we're planting lots of stuff but yeah we're going to be waiting for some trees still like 5 to 7 years some of them like not trees might take like 10 years like we don't know how long it's going to take us to be like fully self sufficient yeah yeah it's a process and uh, uh, i completely understand that since i'm also in the same you know uh structure so really really uh 
inspiring that you guys are growing so much so you were also maybe you could tell the uh, you know people who are watching how is it that they can access the place so what are the volunteer programs how many people are usually there if you know at one point in time and if they want to like come live there for a certain period of time how is the bu land buying process for the community if you could share okay yeah yeah so we have uh, a lot of information probably so much that most people can't even take it all in one sitting <laughs> on our website this so fruithaven.org uh is our website and then there's like each page there's a page about the different kinds of accommodation we have so we have the three community areas and then some private lots once in a while they'll be up for rent um depending on what's available uh also the community area once so there's like fruit haven one two and three that are mainly uh we'll probably have additional ones in the future there's fruit haven four and ten <laughs> kind of skipped a couple numbers and then uh, we'll probably have others in between there coming up later but so people can either buy a lot in those individual ones so uh each one of these like one two whatever ten or more uh they were gonna have their um they have lots individually inside there so for example i have a lot on fruit haven one it's kind of split into two like there's a smaller one that's near the river and then a bigger one up higher, which is a bit more like my farm. And uh, and then I also have a lot Fruit Haven 4 because I thought it was an interesting place. So And then my brother, so I'm helping develop uh, that. And then some people have, yeah, like they might have a share on one, two or three. So you can just like remotely, without ever even coming to Ecuador, they allow uh, people to buy uh, land. So you could just send some information peter does the the land buying process and um they can own the land that way and then they can send money now some of the lots already are developed there is one that has a house on it and some fruit trees and actually uh, quite a, a bit of them are fruiting and so that one's for sale now once in a while you might be lucky there's like one that's already developed for sale uh, but most of the land is undeveloped and uh, then you can just say, OK, well, I want to build something, plant some trees. I would say the priority is definitely plant the trees because they take longer than building. Building can be done within like uh, maybe three to six months if if it's a simple structure. But like planting, yeah, it's high priority. Like bananas are quick, so don't even bother about those yet. I would say like put all the long term trees like durians and meringues and uh, Jack fruits are pretty quick, but it's also good to get them established. So yeah, really nice fruits. Um, and then for what else? Volunteering. I guess um, we used to have more like intensive program. We might do it again, but um, we do workshops for anybody. So even if you're just renting a room or or just whatever, hanging out with someone else, like you can still uh, like some people come and stay at someone else's lot if they know them, if they're like family or some something you can always join us and like learn on how we do permaculture we'll send you some videos and um permaculture and uh, we also do some other activities people started doing like martial arts because we have some owners that are into that and like pole dancing and some other stuff and we do like activities go into waterfalls or caves or different things um in the area um and what else so yeah the, the volunteers they basically it's like cheaper to stay in a tent so we have some shelters as well so it makes it a little bit more comfortable because it can rain quite a bit here sometimes um and uh yeah so that and then if you want like a really intense program we can probably get you like a lot of work if you but most people are kind of okay with like okay i'll learn a little bit and hang out and and not really, but we can do like a discount for people that want a more serious program. Or there's actually a Terra Frutis, um, which is like the older community that started before. So Peter came when Terra Frutis was just uh, basically he started it, as far as I understand. So he, him and uh, Jason and some other people started Terra Frutis and it was owned by one person. So 
uh, everybody there is a community. Well, now they changed it because they see that this group land buy model is so successful. It brings people for the people that want to stay long term. Uh, but there is long term members there as well. So they do like uh, more permaculture stuff, but they also have a festival. So if uh, someone wants to join the festival, usually they'll have to stay in the community for a while to actually volunteer there. Because uh, the festival has limited space, like for volunteers, there's depending on how many um, attendees go. So the more attending people, the more volunteers they can have. And um, of course, there's priority to like members and whoever was around longer. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, there's also another community that started. So one of the guys you probably saw in the documentary, but he was on briefly for a short uh, interview. He was uh, volunteering here with the intention to start another community. And then he found uh, a land. Well, actually, that land was already for sale for some time right next to Terra Frutis. So we're about an hour from them. And then uh, he started this other community. They're not ready yet, so he doesn't really advertise it. But he has like a Telegram channel where people come in if they want to help him start the community. So he's more focused on vegan. Uh, he's not into the raw thing, even though when he was here, he was raw for some time. And, and then he uh, changed his ways and uh, thought that it's fine to be vegan as long as he's more like ethically vegan, whereas we're more health focused. So basically, yeah, he's... Uh, He's a really good community. He's starting, like they're building big structures. So they're in the the beginning phases. We're still developing too. Like I think it could take, I don't know, much longer than <laughs> than some years. Like maybe when we reach like 10 years old. And and I think you're muted, by the way. So. Yeah, yeah. There just my dogs okay. were barking. So I thought, you know, oh, okay. I, I don't want the sound to come. But I'm just like listening to you. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. So uh, uh, there are lots of like different ways and people can be associated. If you would like to just share like the amount that you charge, the, um, at least right now, I'm sure it's going to be changing. Uh, but uh, if uh, people want to. Sure. Some... Yeah. So I think our camping is like 100 a month and uh, $100 and everything's in US dollars. So it's pretty easy uh, for, you know, people that come from US or like convert to US dollars. And then oh, that's for cheaper. that's pretty good, man. Yeah, it's it's enough to pay the local, yeah, the wages and stuff. So we have like maintaining the land and stuff um, with workers, and then we'll do like workshops and activities, and yeah, and yeah. use like the Wi-Fi and electricity and all that. Seems seems to be okay. We still sometimes have to uh, have like other additional inputs, like the owners might say, okay, well, we wanna assist and create something but we also have like sort of uh economies within fruit haven so like other fruit haven owners buy from different fruit haven so we help funding like for example the nursery we're buying plants or if there's like hardware um, type stuff that for construction or or soil amendments or things like that and then uh, yeah. we also have like little jobs to so like accounting and um payroll you know because we have a lot of workers and it's hard to keep track of all that so the only way to actually pay some of us to like maintain this schedule yeah, and all this uh, and so yeah it helps in the maintaining the workshop and so we make a little bit of money it's not much really but yeah like i'm doing some work even managing like the rentals stuff like yeah. that yeah it takes some work to answer emails sure. and clean preparing yeah. the room things like that so I'm also yeah. open to other people coming and doing more of that. So now we have lots of people that are helping and the more, the better, because yeah, I wanted oh, to God. expand and having people yeah, like, like earn money you. is a very good. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. going to be the best way. So like the more possibilities for people to stay longer is when they can actually earn some money. And yeah, uh, yeah the rooms are usually between like one, 40 is for like the cheapest and then 170 and like i think some of the private house which is like really nice house is like 200 or something a month 
but uh, the yeah, most of ours are like between 140, 170, something like that. Depends on if it's like high season or we might, yeah, depends. Okay, and uh, the food is gonna be extra on top. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're yeah, Fruit Haven one, then it's kind of we we do share sometimes. Like we'll say, okay, that everybody that wants, but uh, usually people at the other Fruit Havens they'll be like in their own community area, but they can grow food there. And like here we have lots of bananas. So pretty much always abundant in that yeah. um, for anybody. That's like, you, you definitely don't need to buy bananas if you're here. Uh, yeah. Although sometimes it happens that we're like, oh, we're a bit low. And then they're like 10 cents a piece. So it's not a, not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, other food from the land, like sometimes if we're, if people are actually willing to put a bit of work, then we can have like a pretty good abundance. I remember a time we had lots of salads people are making, like yeah. just go outside with a bowl and fill your bowl and then they bring it back and like maybe clean it and cut it. And it's pretty nice. Um, people like those. Um, but yeah. otherwise we'll have like some seasonal fruits, but yeah, it's usually pretty cheap. I think probably being on the budget can be like a hundred maybe a hundred and thirty a month is pretty good so I'm for coming, like food <laughs> is it cheaper yeah. than india i think india was pretty cheap as far as i remember well it's, i would say it's around the same okay yeah 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 like it this is like fourteen thousand rupees which is pretty good if you're traveling it's like super good okay. like overall like hundred dollars is seven thousand rupees for like a monthly rent for the tent, and if you're traveling, I think that would that is pretty good. And um, I think I spend on food more than this monthly, because of course, okay. like I'm also eat like uh, it depends. Like for example, these days I'm fasting a lot, so it's less. And then watermelons are in the season, so it's very mm, very yeah. cheap. Uh, also uh, but like sometimes I do spend like more than this even though I'm not traveling because you know some it, it, you want to just treat, treat yourself and you know eating okay. abundantly I'm in the re rebuilding phase so this is a this is a great deal man and I, I just need to like uh, uh, check my uh, tickets and I'm good to come <laughs> I'm gonna tell this yeah, to my uh, the, friends as well yeah the flight might be yeah. like the most expensive part because I think yeah. if you're your morning we're night here so it's probably like all the way around yeah. the, the globe now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. If yes. it's a globe, I don't know. Some people have uh, <laughs> some ideas that it might not be. <laughs> anyway, but in any case, yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. I remember not that well, but I remember, yeah, in the cities, there was like lots of papaya. But yeah, I remember that the yeah. quality wasn't as good. Like in Thailand, it was the best, the best fruits ever. And here it's like uh, we're kind of improving the quality uh, yeah. both from the markets because we're demanding like bring us good fruits and then they they do and we buy it so but I don't yeah, know yeah. if I keep track but yeah I would say like maybe 150 a month could be an average it depends yeah if you buy like expensive things are usually yeah. like nuts and uh, things like that are more expensive but then yeah it depends on the season and and how are uh, your relationship with the locals like yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm very uh, good with the local yeah. people so when they have stuff in season I'm usually yeah. getting yeah. a lot of free food as well so <laughs> amazing amazing yeah this, I know like here also we're getting like really um, cheap produce because we go by weekly or by weekly like once in two weeks uh bi-weekly bi-weekly <laughs> yeah so we buy like 100 kgs 200 kgs of watermelons in one go um oh, and well. then you know yeah 60 kgs of pineapple so we're like the bulk dealers so they always give us like the best price and uh, okay, in the nice. here yeah in the mountains we get really good fruits as well they're not organic but they're they're pretty good they're very fresh and very tasty like some of the best fruits that i have in india so and that's what, good, what's but your I, climate like so you have a pretty warm warm weather no see i'm wearing jacket <laughs> so, uh, i'm okay. in the mountains yeah I, mm -hmm. i'm in the south but i i'm living in the sorry in the mountains uh here it's mostly like one sweater or a jacket is enough that's the weather 
and then it gets a okay. little bit colder in, during the winter season and then it gets a little bit hotter in the summer season for example now summers are going on so during the day it will be hot, like uh, not hot hot but like i wouldn't be wearing a sweater so and what's right your elevation now. there uh it's 1300 or something yeah okay yeah. so you can probably yeah. grow chermoya <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah mangoes grow here papayas grow here okay. uh, jackfruit is growing so yeah Perfect, i think so yeah. <laughs> i'll get, get it and <laughs> how's the rainfall do you get like different seasons yeah. with rain oh, oh you can do so avocado also you can grow that avocado avocado is abundant it's like um oh, nice. avocado is uh, yeah the native it's not food, ideal yeah. food i definitely i kind yeah. of stopped eating it but then sometimes yeah. i'll eat a little bit and then it gets addictive but then i i yeah. tend to stop <laughs> eating it after cuz yeah. it's very yeah. heavy but yeah yes. if it grows it's always fun <laughs> it's like... yeah 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 so it grows over here and like in the season we are like eating uh i am eating i would say not we and i was also in the transition phase at that time so it was like good to have some fat i don't know oh, if i'd be able help, to yeah. eat now yeah because now even bananas are like i eat them and i don't feel so good because they don't have so much water content very dense so i don't yeah. know yeah i don't know how it's going to be but yeah you, you can grow the the rains we have rains from june to uh, starting june and it rains almost every day till december <laughs> Okay. So there's a lot is of it long rain, rain then, or the, like stays the whole day the rain or No, it's small uh, you know a slight breeze happening and then it stops and then it rains again and then it stops. So it's very uh, you know bearable. It's beautiful so you actually. You can still do I never... some work and stuff. Yeah. Certainly. Certainly. It's mm-hmm. not like nice. very heavy showers, yeah. You can do work like it plants grow so much. That's the farming yeah, season actually. Yeah, it's a good actually. time for planting. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah and then during December when the winters are like really high it's like things grow so fast our place was like wow it was it's so beautiful to see plants suddenly growing so much it's like it just like warms you up you know inside even though it's like cold outside and um, oh, yeah awesome. and then the dry the dry season comes and then also like it rains once a month or something so uh, okay that's good so keeps things a little yeah. bit wetter yeah 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 and then in the dry season we do the construction work mostly because it's easier. You can probably grow bamboo is that bamboo behind you or Yeah. I mean it's not here but we are growing bamboo as well. We can grow bamboo okay, nice. also over yeah. here yeah. Yeah. Lots of things are yeah, growing so we're quite lucky yeah. Yeah, I think it sounds like a good climate so yeah mulching you can use I don't know if you do like a composting toilet dry toilets. Yeah. Yeah, we have composting toilet nice. only actually on our property. We have made a small tree house toilet and it's like it's like really beautiful and like very nice. like a tree is coming inside the toilet so great space oh, to cool. like <laughs> yeah flush yourself out. Make a video and I'll watch that. Yeah, <laughs> I have to do that. I have to do that. So and then we made an open shower also right now we're in the process of like getting running water so we've set up the tank and everything we have mm-hmm. dug a well over here uh, with the locals dug it it's really beautiful as well we've made steps um, so yeah uh, the toilet experience is pretty good because i remember when i was living in the city it's one of the most depressing places you can get lost in your mm, thoughts yeah. so much and then when you have fresh air it's like i i um, look forward to going in the toilet and just like spending some time over there And yeah, we'll be yeah, the, making compost. Also, we're doing pomegranate. With the proper, if there's any smell, just add more wood shavings, or just find like yeah. some old leaves, things like that. Crush it up. If probably from construction, you can collect wood shavings and just keep yeah. them in sacks. And like maybe there's other places. Sometimes they can deliver them. In some countries, they have. I don't know why. Oh yeah, in the US they have it, but well, I don't know if in India they might have it or. Well, but we we actually have a eucalyptus forest. so we have lots of uh, dried leaves that we use for mulch okay. also and that is what we use for um, toilets as well so we have like abundance of dry leaves and we just like put them put them in like you know boxes uh, next to the space where we uh, take a dump <laughs> okay yeah just, like, nice. cover it yeah yeah so that's it doesn't one of smell. the things yeah. Yeah. i like that a lot as well because it's if you read uh, this human newer handbook and it talks about the nutrient cycle and it's like the modern society they're separating the uh the manure base you know the human manure or whatever like the all these nutrients they're getting lost they're going in like toxic 
but they're not actually toxic. They're like what we're missing. And then they're using chemicals to fertilize. Yeah. And then it's like yeah. totally disconnecting. But if you make the loop, the connection is so yeah. clear that like, okay, that's what we're meant to do. We're meant to like poop and grow more fruits. And then, yeah, the loop yeah, is connected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, initially when we came here, uh, it was a completely different setup. And then sometimes, you know, we would just go out in the wild. And I saw mm. like, you know, for, uh, from the spaces that we were using for like, you know, we would dig in and we'd just go when the mm. construction and all the house was not there. And um I saw like watermelon plants coming out out of uh, that yeah, and I felt exactly. oh my god <laughs> like <laughs> I felt like my life is you know worth something it's like I'm not yeah, doing yeah. anything <laughs> and then you shit and then yeah, the plant comes too. out yeah, sometimes yeah. I think I don't know if I end up uh, eating papaya seed which doesn't happen but yeah more like cucumber that's what I had like really yeah. awesome I had like 10 yeah. or more cucumbers tomatoes all kinds of stuff and yeah it makes yeah. sense to me i don't see anything wrong with that body. it's the cycle yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, yeah it was uh this robert what was his name greenfield um on youtube oh uh, yeah robert and greenfield yeah. yeah yeah and he's talking about like how uh we don't care take care of our shit you know and uh, yeah. it's yeah it's important you know what to know what's happening to our shit <laughs> completely mm. it's like you have to take care of your shit until unless you don't do that i think you're not in like sinking in in you know the whole cycle mm -hmm. of the uh yeah the, the the purpose that we have to serve so it's uh everything is rewarding i think in this lifestyle the connection with the ground and just like living in nature being in sync with the, the circadian rhythm which is the silence the oxygen the clean water and uh, yeah everything is just uh, how it's meant to be and i think it just centers you down so much it's so great for your mental and physical health it's so so rewarding i cannot like stress enough on it on it like how much like my life has improved because of just like being in nature and uh, being connected really connected with mother earth like from the depth of you know my being so it's it's so rewarding <laughs> cannot stress and it how enough. long did you do it now the raw vegan lifestyle so I, i've been high raw vegan for uh, two years um more than two years actually uh july uh, 2018 i started to, or 17 i can't remember but but yeah okay. and then i was uh, um I, like i was like completely high raw vegan not eating uh, and then uh cooked foods and then i went for the two months of juice fast and i was for a long time raw vegan and then i kind of faltered for some time so I was eating like a little bit here and there cooked food. Uh, uh, and then uh, last eight, eight to nine months, I've uh, only been uh, fruits, uh, sometimes nuts and uh, a little bit of greens here and there, but no salt, no spices, nothing. And now mm -hmm. uh, I think, yeah, more than a month or something, only fruits, um, nothing. Like this is what I, my body is just like moving me towards it. I cannot uh, take too much of um, you know nuts and fats anymore before i was like oh yeah. i want you know i want that uh, savory taste i want like something bland and i want nuts and all but like slowly slowly your body is like no you know you want to just wants to clean itself and now i'm mostly on fruits and uh still detoxing also still You're clearing out to the light energy so it's it's the yeah. transition now yeah yeah, still exactly. once in uh, maybe like one one to three weeks I might have some cooked like fruits so we have like this palm fruit that's now in season and it's yeah. kind of starchy and it's kind of, uh, it's kind of interesting so I thought I would have a little bit but yeah as long as yeah. it's like a whole plant and I'm like boiling it I'm kind of okay with it and if I'm low yeah. on some other fruits then I'll maybe boil a plantain but yeah normally I definitely prefer a very light and Certainly, if I do it, it's only at night. It's like uh, yeah. not till four kind of thing, but usually after yeah. four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My partner actually is right now on watermelons for now uh, for uh, 35, 36 days. And then he's also like uh, mixing in a lot of dry fasting, 44 hours oh, cool. in between. Yeah. So uh, I'm also like, you know, uh, doing a lot of fasting. Sometimes I just like drink juice in the morning and then one watermelon and that's it or just juices just the, because that's what the body is asking for so yeah <laughs> nice did you manage to grow any watermelon also 
what so we yet. we had <laughs> yeah like when we were on the other land we could grow it somehow it's not growing here i don't know maybe the seeds are not the best so we are figuring yeah. out um the soil but should again, be good they prefer good good soil yeah yeah we're working a lot with the soil so maybe this year it will grow and uh, we'll we'll try yes. with other uh, uh, seeds as well uh, let's see mm. it would be, would be amazing to have watermelons on the land <laughs> yeah takes a bit of space no. and i guess some sun and yeah. mulching i think yeah they like it to be mulched they don't want yeah. too much water i'm not sure yeah maybe before the wet season yeah yeah season. they're starting yeah, to grow, they can grow again fast they can be like yeah. i think four months three or four months or something you can get watermelons yeah i don't know what had happened we had like flowers and then small small watermelons were coming but then they would die maybe i think the okay. seeds were not good some insects yeah. sometimes i think they could get them you can try yeah. covering them with something like a net okay sometimes people yeah. do like yeah cuz it might be like some wasp or some some insect might just come and, and yeah. just like bore into it or something like that yeah keep an yeah. eye on them see how it goes <laughs> If yeah, it's yeah, the best. Yeah. It's definitely a part of the master fast. So one of the options uh, for the juice is instead of grape juice, you could use watermelon. Yeah. The only yeah. tricky thing where a lot of people are confused about is like it's cooked, and if it has to be cooked, then they're like, "Oh, raw is law. Why is it cooked?" But actually, it's special for this fast. And uh, one sec, I was just checking. Okay, they're they're yeah. not turning off the Wi-Fi yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. so it has to be cooked because of the. Uh, well, it has some explanation there about like the plasmatic field energy, and it uh, wow. it's a really unique fast. Like at first, I was hesitant too. I was like, oh, why? Like I'm all into fruits. Why should I cook the juice? But yeah. actually, I, you could just buy it pasteurized. I didn't actually. Well, sometimes I cooked it, but I didn't do it recently because now I'm not too drawn to doing it like yeah. that way anymore i'm doing yeah just juices but yeah i think the cooking uh yeah he explains how it opens it plasmatically and um also i think it kind of kills a lot of the things in it and maybe that's a good yeah. thing during this yeah. fast because it's like just about moving out the mucoid plaque there's no need to take in more nutrition just like starve the parasites yeah. and yeah and take everything out so it's so yeah any dark juice he says like the watermelon or other dark berries blueberries or uh, mulberries or blackberries or cherries or dark grapes so it has to be dark juice basically and then mixed okay. with a lemon light juice or it could be a pineapple juice some something acidic that's light and that one doesn't yeah. have to be cooked he said but it uh. it is more powerful but but yeah it's an interesting fast anyway wow yeah it does sound very interesting it's amazing that there's so much knowledge which is there and a lot of like i did not know about this fast at all so i'll definitely check mm -hmm. it out it's it's always useful also like when you're trying to help other people who are going through something so uh for me also the transition happened because i was not feeling well i was living in vietnam at that time and uh i i got like some infection uh it's called abse and then it spread out and they were they gave me antibiotics and it was not healing and then i did a 3 days of water fasting and and it was gone and since then i was like oh my god i need to get into this stuff because i uh, anyone oh, yeah. i think no one likes hospitals you know no one wants to uh yeah no one wants to be like you know uh, pay your, like just like give your body to somebody else and then you know you don't know what they're doing what drugs they're putting in you so that yeah. was my, the the most motivating factor and i'm like really passionate about helping people to like raise their vibrations through food as well as like you know have a healthy body and not being you know just have that intuitive health inside of you is so powerful it's so so empowering to like have the power of your body it's the most you know amazing gift that anyone can have so i'm like really you know i want to spread this information as much as possible and it's amazing in india it's also already happening there's something called satvik movement uh, and also there are smaller uh, setups also where they're practicing naturopathy and then healing through food and herbs um, so and people are more open to the idea when i started putting content on youtube like just recently i've been putting more content because i wanted to take my time also to like you know experiment and feel the uh, you know the raw power of raw food and uh, there is such good response and i see people are really looking for it so mm. um 
it's it's always so amazing to spread the information of uh, you know any yeah, kinds of podcasts anything that you got a lot of subscribers like oh thank you man I'm, you have I'm a lot of subscribers grow. right you have like uh, 4000 or something yeah yeah just recently nice. i reached for yeah well, i i've seen that collaborating with people and like doing interviews is like really helping out to for example you got to know me to mm. julian as well so um Yeah and then uh, Julian told me a few things that I could do for example just like being active in the community uh, just like having posts just like having engagement uh, with people I think these two things are really helping me out uh, a lot to grow specifically on YouTube or which Yeah Yeah oh, okay. on YouTube yeah as well as uh, mm-hmm. Instagram as well uh, I think just connecting with people truly genuinely being mm-hmm. there for them is like uh, something that um is helping a lot sharing your story uh, has been helping and being consistent was uh, something that helped a lot as well working with the mm. thumbnails uh, you know just like making thumbnails that attract people and like make them see inside what's there i think just being a woman also helps okay yeah <laughs> and that's a good advantage that, that, that i always have so <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean that's... the the world was a little bit unfair in giving all the rights <laughs> to the women so some some is <laughs> useful <laughs> yeah but a balance out yeah. somehow peace yeah. love and correct conduct is the uh, motto of uh, master fast guy yeah 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 nice more people are coming on board and becoming raw vegan and whatever master fast lifestyle as yeah. well Yeah. That's good. I think that's yeah. uh yeah, the new the new earth I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been really lovely connecting with you. I can't tell you how amazing I feel. I'm sure like the viewers nice. who are watching also would be feeling the energy. Uh is there any I mean I don't want to take up much of your time because you're also thinking about the Wi-Fi and I'm sure we'll come yeah, yeah, together on the show again. They want to yeah. turn it off. Yeah, we can probably do another one of these I don't know in a week or a couple of weeks or whenever. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to. So, is there any any uh message that last message that you want to give to the viewers about you know um, anything yeah else. i think it's awesome that you're doing yeah you should uh, make your own communities and that's really cool yeah so see if you can get people together join yeah maybe like find some groups like when i was in toronto then i made some groups there about raw vegan wow. whatever and i think jillian is from toronto if i'm not mistaken I, yeah yeah and jillian is uh eli mata do you know about him Ah uh, yeah I saw that the video yeah they made like two different uh videos recently I've yeah. discovered her so I was watching her yeah. uh podcasts and no uh, that yeah. was pretty awesome Yeah Yeah I mean Eli is like amazing amazing he, I I talked to him as well and uh, he's like eating really less food and he's so energetic it's like he's like really clean vessel and an amazing vibration as well and Julian is also doing such amazing work like connecting connecting people like i think she's doing really good work in the community as well just um, nice. bringing people together bringing the community together yeah, so they have like a toronto community kind of thing going yeah. on <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know they should but anyway, yeah. yeah when, when yeah. i was there but then i just i didn't want to stay in like a big city environment so yeah i kind of wanted to to be in the nature but maybe that's good too you know if people want to be in the cities and they want to be a uh, raw vegans as well it's kind of interesting to be in like such a a weird frequency like being vibrating so high on fruit and being in this like concrete jungle but some people here like even going to the city that's nearby that's like uh to me it's like a little town i mean i've i've been in toronto and new york and like all kinds of huge cities uh like hustle and bustle and everything and and I'm kind of like yeah it's whatever I'm just in the city and there's like lots of fruits that's all that comes to me is like oh my god there's so many good fruits for sale like I can't even eat them all because here sometimes I'm like oh I'm I'm out of fruit I have to go forage I have to go find like maybe in the shop if I can't find enough fruits because it's really yeah. that's what it comes to like you're living in nature it's like the outside if you don't go outside you can't get it as like yeah there's tons of bananas and even papayas like sometimes we have a lot now it's not so many but and the papayas here yeah i remember in india for some reason they didn't taste so good 
but like Thailand, yeah. they are good. And here it depends. Like the ones we grow, yeah. they're really good. But uh, other yeah. people like sometimes they're not as good. Just yeah, they're very tricky. They like good soil and yeah. um, good drainage as well. Same with watermelon. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, yeah, the yeah. messages. Uh, yeah, I think that it's good. People should uh, make their communities get together and um, yeah, focus on the fruit, grow it. Really nice to see that there's more people in India. There's um, some people in Costa Rica and Hawaii. Uh, there's one guy in uh, Rwanda, I think it was. He sent us some messages. He wanted some. Uh, funding to come to us but i said like okay why don't you just uh, make a community there and so he started mm -hmm. learning permaculture and he went to these yeah. classes and uh we'll see maybe we can support him i haven't heard from him in some time so <laughs> maybe yeah. i'll send him a message yeah but wow. yeah it'll be awesome to see these communities forming all over the world so yes yeah that's a that's a beautiful message i would say because i think like when I left Vietnam and came back to India, that was uh, because like community was already thriving over here. And uh, I think this is one of the most important thing that we're looking for is like connecting with people. Really connection like makes us thrive so much, connecting with nature, connecting with ourselves and connecting with other people. We, we, we're human, uh, humans are social beings and we need it so much. So I think your Wi-Fi is also going now. Okay. So uh, oh, that's yeah. awesome, yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, maybe eventually you can start a festival. I think that brings people together. Make a fruit awesome. festival. And they'll come yeah. visit you. You can buy bulk yeah. watermelons and stuff. <laughs> I think yes. one of the workers is coming. Okay, I'll have to yeah. see what's going on. But uh, okay. yeah, I'll make another video. Sure, man. Thank you so like much. And... Yeah, thank you so much It'll for coming nice in. It was sunny. so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Thank laughs> the sun well. has come up. Yeah, brings me lots good memories of love for from it. India. Yeah yeah that was the one yeah. of the states i didn't visit but who knows maybe one day Thanks. when the yeah. travel yeah, becomes yeah. nice again yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're always welcome to come here this is a space for you always available so nice. thank, thank you so you. much boris thank you so much for coming and thank you everyone for watching nice. the show it was awesome yeah do. i was also yeah. excited to meet you and yeah it was awesome yeah <laughs> we'll talk again <laughs> for sure yes all right. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Do follow him and do like and subscribe on his channel as well as on this video. And thank you so much. Uh, lots of love. Namaste. Bye bye.